Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another video. Guys, a few weeks ago, I did a video titled Jerkbait Suck, talking about the reasons why I do not enjoy fishing a jerkbait, even though I acknowledge that it is one of our best cold water, best year-round baits that we have. It is a phenomenal bait to use, but there are a lot of headaches associated with fishing a jerkbait. And I got a really positive feedback from the viewers out there. They enjoyed the video. They feel the same way I do. And uh, I decided to do another video in the same manner. And this one, as you guys have seen the thumbnail, is titled Drop Shots Suck for a Reason. Drop shots are one of those baits that also drive me nuts. It's one of the things that just, you know, you got to deal with it because they catch fish so well. Like drop shots are one of the best fish catching techniques that we have. But the reality is they drive me nuts. So they, they really do to the point where more than any other bait, I probably will steer away from using them if I can, you know, meaning... If there's circumstances where maybe I can catch fish on a Ned rig instead of fishing a drop shot, I will go ahead and actually not rig up a drop shot. Now, having said that, I generally still have one rigged up because they are very good fish catching tools. And they're one of those baits after you think you've cleaned an area out, you can pick up a drop shot and generally catch another fish or two. Now, the reasons that I am not a fan of fishing a drop shot have more to do with um, a lot of the different things that, in my opinion, are actually flawed about a drop shot. Meaning, the first simply just has to do with your line twist. You know, there's so many components here that cause line twists. I've talked about them in the past. One is your, your weight. If you do not have the knot perfectly at the top of your weight, your weight can spin, which causes line twists. In some instances, you might have a weight that's got the swivel that actually has lead or whatever the metal substance poured over the swivel. So therefore it doesn't, it doesn't spin like it's supposed to spin, which you can see in this case, this one does rotate just fine. But a lot of times people don't look at that based on how you've got your knot on your hook that can lead to potential line twists. Your bait, the way it's rigged on your hook can also lead to line twists. The faster you retrieve them back to the boat leads the line twist. There are a lot of things flawed about a drop shot when you're talking about line twist. I do personally, I don't know of any other technique that causes as much line twist as a drop shot. But again, we deal with it because it because it just catches fish so well. And it allows us to present really small baits that we can't normally fish in other means. So that's that's one for sure. Uh, another reason drop shots drive me nuts is because of the way you have to rig them on your rods. Meaning if you don't have a specific drop shot hook keeper on your rod, which is one that allows you to slide the line up underneath your hook keeper, you're in trouble. Meaning if you have an enclosed hook keeper that is perfect for hooking a hook through, but not perfect for hooking a weight through, you are in big trouble because if you go ahead and hook the hook through your hook keeper on your rod, that means you've got your weight flopping around. So there's different things you can do. You can wrap your line around it. Some people put rubber bands on the butt part of their rod so they slide the weight under that to keep it. The thing here is it's just more steps. I mean, it like I actually build my rods that I use for drop shots specifically in a manner where I know I can have my leader and hook all in certain positions. I've gone as far as putting two hook keepers on a rod, one that's generally higher up the blank so I can put my hook and then one that I can slide the weight under that's below the reel seat. It's just one of those things that drives me nuts though. I feel like I shouldn't have to do that for a specific technique. Because as soon as that weight comes free, all that happens is it wraps around every other rod that you got on your deck to the point where even if you're not trying to stow it, let's say you're fishing with it, you put it down to make a cast with a few extra rods, and then all of a sudden you go to pick it up. At that point, the weight's caught and everything. It's just a pain in the butt. Another has to do with every time I feel like you catch a fish, 
the weight gets pulled off. The weight goes flying. And, you know, it's just one of those things I feel like I'm constantly tying on weights. And sometimes it just has to do with you net the fish. The weight doesn't come off, but you net the fish. And then the weight gets so entangled in the net that you end up having to cut the weight off to get it out of the net. So it's one of those things that it's just, it's such a flawed technique to me, but we deal with it because it catches fish. And I'm constantly tying on weights. And I got to tell you, I really prefer fishing tungsten drop shot weights, but I have a hard time using them because of how frequently you break off the weights, whether you get stuck on the bottom or whether a fish jumps and knocks it off or whether you go to you know, you're just going to land a fish with the net and you got to cut it off. You're constantly losing or cutting off your weights and it drives me crazy. And I don't have a good answer for that. You know, like I said, I, there's different ways you can kind of help with line twists. There's different ways you can help with, with storing and stowing your drop shot rig on your rod. But when it comes to the weight breaking off, I don't really have that many good ideas in terms of keeping my weight hooked up. So another thing has to do then, because I'm constantly cutting or breaking the weights off, or I'm constantly, uh, you know, breaking the knot, you know, a lot of times a drop shot's one of those rigs that you want to retie more than anything else, because your knot is, if you run your tag end of your knot down through the eye of your hook to get it to suspend out, at that point, your knot is constantly rubbing on the inside of your hook eye, which means there's more wear and tear there. So it's one of the, one of the techniques that you need to retie more than a lot of other techniques. So I'm constantly retying drop shots and it drives me nuts because they are somewhat time consuming to tie. It's not just grab, you know, grab a swim bait and tie it on. It's a lot of different knots, a lot of different measurements. There's a lot of different components and therefore it's more time consuming. And for me during a tournament, the last thing I want to be doing is wasting my time with my bait not in the water. So the more I'm retying, the more it drives me nuts. Now I can tell you I've got some, some things I do to kind of counter that. One is simply that a lot of times I'll have a bunch of pre-rigged drop shot leaders made up, meaning you know, if I'm throwing a drop shot with 10 foot leader, I'll have pre-rigged drop shots. So all I have to do is tie a new connecting knot from my braid to my leader. And then I've got the hook and the weight already done up. I'll take a lot of those, uh, I'll take a section of like fun noodle and I can wrap it around it. And it's just something for a tournament perspective. I'm more efficient if I only have to tie one knot, which would be my connecting knot between my main line and my leader than having to rig up an entire new drop shot system. And I'll even have the baits rigged up if I know exactly what baits I'm using. So again, I can kind of combat that issue, but I'll also tell you it drives me nuts because a lot of times when I'm rigging those, it takes me a while to do it while I'm sitting there in my boat the night before a tournament. And then you get out on the water and sometimes what happens is those leaders come free. So therefore you have a, a, a big pile of leaders hanging around inside of one of your compartments. Sometimes you don't even use them. So you feel like you wasted the time and you wasted the line to pre-rig those because you didn't even need them then in the long run. So it's just one of those things that even though I'll do it to prepare for a tournament, it still kind of drives me nuts. Uh, the last just has to do with the amount of baits. I feel like, you know, this is a technique where we go through a pile of baits, whether you like to nose hook your bait so that the bait is kind of hanging off, or you like to Texas rig it. The point is a lot of times we're fishing really skinny little worms like this robo worm, and they hold up for one fish. So, you know, whether, like I said, whether you've just got it nose hooked or you've got a Texas rig, the point is they rip, they tear, the fish throw them off, you get one bait out of it. So it's one of those things where I feel like, you know, with the Berkeley flatworm, one of my favorite drop shot baits, if I go out and I'm fishing for smallmouth, I tend to go through three or four packs if I'm doing it in a day. And therefore that's like 30 bucks in plastics that I just blew through. But I do it because I want to catch fish. But it's just one of those baits that, you know, whether the fish throw them off or you catch a fish and the bait tears or you cast them off because you've barely got them nose hooked when you make a cast it just drives me nuts there are so many things about a drop shot 
that drive me crazy. And I, I you know, I don't, I'm not making a series out of these suck videos because there's really only two, maybe three techniques that kind of drive me nuts. Jerk baits are one, drop shots are another, and Alabama rigs. Those three things, and for the most part, it has to do with how much of a cluster they can turn your boat into. I am one that likes to have my boat nice and tidy, everything organized. And as soon as I pull out a drop shot, a jerk bait, or an Alabama rig, I feel like everything is just one big knot in the boat and it drives me nuts. So hopefully a bunch of you guys out there can relate to this. Uh, you know, I, I've done a bunch of videos that kind of give you some tips and ways to combat some of these issues with drop shots. But as a whole, a drop shot is my least favorite technique to use. I know they catch fish, but man, they can be a pain in the butt to use. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow for you.